Give me five minutes and I'll give you my top 10 web front end technology trends for 2020. To me, 2020 is gonna be the year of performance. How can we reduce the time between when the customer gets the page and sees the HTML and when they can actually start interacting with it? So right off the bat, that brings me to my number five, which is vanilla JS. And when I say vanilla JS, I don't necessarily mean JavaScript in particular. It could be TypeScript compiled to JS. What I mean is removing the framework from what gets downloaded to the customer. I mean, I hear a lot about like, oh, it's 100K of, of framework. Isn't that just the same as 100K of image? It's not. An image you can pass off to the GPU and get back a bitmap and everything's cool. JS, the CPU actually has to go through all the work of parsing it and compiling it on the client side on these tiny little phones. Another thing we can do is defer or delay the execution of the JavaScript code on the client, which brings me to my number four, which is concurrent mode in React. If you thought React hooks were a big deal, concurrent mode is going to blow your mind. Concurrent mode is about baking better support for asynchronous behavior right into the framework itself. Interruptible rendering, transitions, suspenses. Facebook has done a lot of work in trying to figure out what perceived performance feels like to the consumer, and then building that support for creating UIs that do that right into the framework itself. I think we're gonna see other frameworks start to go that way as well. For example, Vue has gone into getting kind of React hooks type stuff with Vue use. So other frameworks are saying, hmm, yeah, asynchronous behavior and support for it is where we wanna be. But what if you could do all that without the framework? Actually not have a framework on the client at all. And that brings me to my number three, which is custom elements and web components. There actually is a component-based framework built right into the browser itself, and that's custom elements. That means that you can do components on the client side without bringing that down that 100K a bundle to bring down your framework code. That's a huge performance boost right there because you're avoiding the compilation and parsing phase that I talked about before. So if you think, oh, I haven't seen much of these custom elements, are they really out there? Actually, you're looking at custom elements right now. YouTube itself is built using custom elements. So if it's good enough for Google and YouTube, it might be worth having a check out. Another way to think about custom elements is that they're portable components, meaning that you can actually reuse them in different contexts. Like you, if you have a button and a carousel as part of like the design system language of your site, you can reuse those components, those custom elements that deliver the cut and the button and the, the uh, carousel in your React, Vue, and Angular code. So that's less code that you have to write in React, Vue, and Angular, and you get more consistency because it's always the same across all three. Another use for custom elements is part of my second pick, and that's micro front ends. So you can think about micro front ends as breaking down the page into sections like header, footer, if you're doing e-commerce, maybe buying tools, product display, that kind of thing. So not little itty bitty components that are put together, but big chunks of functionality. So high level components that maybe work together, maybe share a little data, but mostly work on their own and can be versioned and deployed independently. Another cool thing is that you can use different languages to develop them. For example, one of your components could be in vanilla JS if it's not that complex. Another could be in React if it, there's a lot of specific little itty bitty complexity in its behavior. So I've done a lot of videos on micro front ends already in 2019, and I'll probably do a lot more in 2020 as we really haven't come up with a framework yet that everybody's decided to use as a sort of micro front end basis. And that brings me to my number one pick for 2020, and that's Jamstack. Jamstack stands for JavaScript API and Markups, Jam. It's basically statically deployed sites. So we can think about players in this space like Hugo, Jekyll, Gatsby, with Jamstack, you don't have to worry about servers. You don't have to worry about monitoring them. You will, and you get much better latency because when you deploy them with S3, particularly on a CDN, the customers are getting access to your code like right there within just a few network hops. So to sum up, it kind of all comes down to being clever with the tools that we have to get better performance. We have browsers now that can manage and handle their own components with custom elements. We've got CDNs or content distribution networks that can put our code right out there within a few hops of the customer. We have micro front ends, so you can go and construct the page and independently deploy and version parts of the page. And then when you use frameworks, we're gonna have expanded support for interruptible rendering, which is going to make them feel a lot more performant than they have in the past. 
So over the course of 2020, I'm gonna be making a lot more videos about all of these things, definitely with an emphasis on performance. You can go and take a look at my 2019 videos that cover a lot of these similar topics. So I think 2020 is the year that we're gonna try and make the web feel as performant as native clients have in the past. So basically like the apps on your phone, they're gonna, you're gonna feel that websites have a similar sort of feel. All right, folks, feel free to comment or like or subscribe. It's been great so far. And as always, as I like to say at the end of all my videos, just be kind to one another.